Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize uh, vector data with time attributes, just with a couple lines of code uh, using uh, LeafMap. So before getting into the details, I would like to show you the demo, what it looks like. This is a, a map showing you the median home um, values in California, but it can be any other vector data. And so it's a polygon data set. When you hover my uh, mouse, you can see you uh, low right corner here, it can show you the attribute, what it looks like. And also there's a slider here that allows you to click and it will basically loop through the attribute data and I'm gonna show you, for example, the, the, the home values throughout the last 25 years, the monthly home values. So the data from zero. And so essentially this is a vector data with columns indicating the monthly housing values. And just with a couple clicks, you will be able to loop through the data and then see the changes of the home values, the increase of home values during the last uh, 25 years. There's also a uh, upper right corner here. You can see the, uh, the lesion. So it allows you to see, for example, from uh, $0 to 200,000, 200,000 to four, uh, 400,000, all the way to the last one, 1 million to over 2 million. So this is very easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that. You can adapt this one to any of your vector data set. As long as you have those columns, uh, you'll be uh, easy to do. Okay. So if you want to try this one out, go to the website, leafmap.org. The notebook the link is also in the video description below. Once you're on the website, uh, go to the lower left corner here, notebooks, and then scroll down to find uh, the latest one, 105 vector time slider. So once you click, uh, come here, you should be able to see these notebooks. There are a couple of ways you can try this one out. Uh, you, if you don't want to install anything on computer, you can try this one using the Pi Cafe web app. So right click, open this one in a new tab. And so here, it will open this one up and then showing you on your, uh, in your browser. This is Pi Cafe, basically it's a platform allows you to uh, write interactive web app without install things on computer. Everything runs within the browser. So it's very powerful and very easy to do. So here shows you basically what it looks like. Um, I don't have time to go into the detail, but basically it's creating a map and then adding the data very much similar to the notebook that I'm gonna show you later. But the nice thing is that uh, anyone can do it. And so after a couple of seconds, you'll be able to see, for example, uh, the map showing you random, right? You can make changes on the left side here. It will be reflected uh, uh, quickly on the map to the right. And you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Uh, you can also uh, drag the time slider here to the left and right. So you'll be able to see, for example, the changes of the um, vector data. So this is the GeoJSON file, uh, but this reading using um, GeoPandas and then convert the basically um, the value to color code and then add the time slider. Okay, so this is the web app if you want to try it out. You can also do it uh, using Google Colab or you can install the package on your computer. Since I already have that on my computer, I'm going to show you here um, if you scroll to the top. So let me um, show you step by step. The first step is to import the library. So we're going to <coughs> execute, uh, import the library and then pointing to the file. So this URL can be something on the internet or it can be something on a local computer. Anything that GeoPandas can read, then you should be able to do it. So I'm going to basically uh, pointing to the zero home value. Uh, I can show you uh, if you want. You can download the data to your computer if you want, but you can also just read it using GeoPandas. And once you have that, um, you might take a couple seconds to read the data. And I'm going to show you just the first two rows. So if you scroll to the right, there are locked columns. So the data came from um, zero and so i aggregate the data but also add um, the geojson so this is geojson file the first column represent the um basically the county uh, uh, unique id and geo id then starting from year 2000 january uh, 31st every month for the last 25 years the latest one we have is um january 31st 2025 and uh, so we have a lot of monthly Home value data, you can see the value here. This represents, for example, over 800,000 uh, medium home values in that particular county in uh, California. So once you have the data, then what we need to do is to create a new data frame that we can convert the oldest numbers into 
a color code because when we're trying to map that on the map, we need to assign a color and we're not assign, um, assigning the, the same color for every county. We are trying to assign a different color for different values. So what you can do here is to have something like this called a Langen uh, Dictionary. So it allows you to specify a range. And then so if, if the house is the home value is within uh, 0 to 200,000, it's going to assign this uh, light blue color. If it's between 200,000 to 400,000, then it's going to this color. So all the way, for example, from the minimum value to the maximum value. And there might be some county that we down home values. For example, there's no data. You can also specify just this no data and then give a color. So this one is just a light gray color. That's it. Also, the data doesn't have to be numerical data. So if you, for example, your um, uh, vector data contains categorical data, for example, low, high, medium, very high, or something like that, you can also directly specify a string here and then give a color. So it's very uh, flexible. It can pretty much do any like data, uh, basically reclassify the data into different colors. And so once you run this one, you can call this function um, color call data frame and then passing the data, passing the legend, it will automatically figure out what you need to use. So if you provide a, a categorical data, it's going to change the, basically change the category to color. If you provide a range of values, it's going to extract the values and then whatever, for example, in this case, look at this number here, uh, over 9,000, uh, 931,835. So it's going to be within this range and the color will be like this. So you're going to change that and let's take a look at this. After that, this will be the new data frame. So right now the data frame has the hex color code. That basically means every value has been converted to a color. Although here it looks like pretty much the same color because they are, the values are all very high. So if you look at this one, they all are above 800,000. That's why it's all the same value. But if you display more counties, you might see different values. But because in California, all of them are very high. So right now I show you five uh, rows and here you can see that right now they have different color. So this is essentially what it's doing is to turn your data into a color coded data frame. Once you have that, um, the next step is very simple. Just create a map. Once you have the map, then we can add the data. So we're going to call this function called add um, GDF time slider then just passing a geodata frame that we create the color coded geodata frame set the time interval so if you're trying to play the video how long it's going to take for from one frame to the next one and whether or not you want to zoom to the layer um, so we set this to two by default also you can add a laser have a title and that's it so let's run this one you see it's super quick now we have this map so we can maximize full screen here so you can see uh, more clearly and you, when you have your mouse low right corner here it will also show you the attribute so right now it, everything has uh, the color but you can add the original data if you want but just showing you right now for each tech category so this will be the color corresponding color and there's a slider here so if you don't need the attribute anymore you can just zoom in uh, click this button it will um, hide this one then this, this is the so-called time slider so you can slide to a particular month, something like this, right, all the way to the end. So January 31st, 2025, and this is the, the last monthly data. If you want to just play the animation, just click this button, and now it will basically loop through the attribute and then show you the data. So under the hood is updating the color for each layer. So we build on top of uh, IPy leaflet and IPy widget that allows you to change data interactively. You can technically also change if the, Polygon also change. You can also change the, the geometry, but in this case, we're just only changing the attribute. If you have your mouse, you will see the, the icon uh, changes. Uh, you might want to move it out so it's not interfere with the visualization. So uh, it's very, again, very flexible. Uh, you can see clearly the changes of the home values in California the last 25 years increasing. And then uh, I think somewhere in uh, 2008, because of the um, housing prices you can see the value for example right now it's increasing overall right throughout the state and then in 2008 it actually decreased right now it's the that lighter color that means home value 
uh, goes down and then it comes back especially during the pandemic the last five years you can see the color changes much darker that means almost all the home values has increased a lot uh, during the last couple of years so this is how easy it is to basically do the animation once you're done you can click this uh, button you can uh, pause it uh, the animation you can continue to play if you want to and if you don't need that anymore you can click uh, the close button to just close it and so you'll be gone so right now we only have one data layer here we also have just have the laser showing up in here and you can adapt this one to any vector data set as long as you your vector have some kind of a time attributes uh, it doesn't have to be home value it can be for example it can be temperature uh, it can be any value represent it can you it can be for example crime data it can be household income it can be anything as long as you have a column and then multiple columns indicating the attribute if you have a just a few columns then you might want to change this time interval to a larger value because this is basically 0 0.05 seconds so basically in um uh, it's very very fast but if you can change it to just one that means uh, from one frame to the next one you'll be like one second one second because we have 25 years data it's going to take a long time so again you can customize you can also <coughs> excuse me um specify the labels and also the time columns because if you have a lot of columns you don't want to use them all you can pass in a list of column names then it's just going to extract those particular columns the label means it's going to be the one that's going to show up um, in the time attribute so you can also specify um, the name of the column if you don't want to use exactly the name of the column you can provide a label and then but you need to be one-to-one -one relationship if you use 10 columns then you need to have 10 labels so it's up to you what you uh, want to do want to utilize okay so again shift tab here time interval the position so this will be where you want to play, uh, place this time slider so it can be a low left corner um, basically four corners and then also the slider length how long you want the slider to be so here it's like this long but you can make it uh, shorter if you want also you can customize the style right now we are only changing the color so the animation is basically just changing the color but i can define the outline color the thickness and also when you hover your mouse you can also change the color so everything is just similar the parameters to the 8 gda function in um, this may allows you to customize a lot more um, style okay so that's all uh, for this video i hope you find it useful i will see you in the next one take care